Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be covering the big bad M word in real estate for buyers. That is multiple offers. And unfortunately, the reality is as we head into the spring market here in 2024, at the time of recording this, multiple offers are definitely starting to creep back into the market. So being prepared, especially if you plan to buy this year on how to handle multiple offers is absolutely going to be key. Now, before we dive too deep into this topic, I ask that if you do like these videos, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget, throw a subscribe on there because all of that does help this channel reach more people. And of course, we can create more content for you guys. And without further ado, we're going to talk today about the five do's and the five don'ts when handling multiple offers. So let's kick this video off first with the five don'ts of winning in multiple offer. These are things that you should probably avoid if you want to have a better chance at having your offer accepted. Don't number one. The first don't I have on the list is don't rely on the listing price to be market value. In fact, this is the biggest misconception in any market is that you should believe that the listing price denotes market value. At the end of the day, what a list price really is, is a marketing price. What you need to do if you're going to figure out where the price actually is on a property is run what we call comps. Take a look at what is actually sold in the area, what buyers are actually purchasing, where those property values sit, and you could see a couple of different things. One, that listing could be priced in and around the market price. It could be priced a little bit high and maybe you can justify a lower offer. But as we head into the spring market, the common strategy we're going to start to see more is agents are going to be pricing the property below market value because their hopes when they talk to their seller is that if the lower price is going to drive more buyers to the property, they might get more offers and potentially drive that price just a little bit higher than actual market value. So the first don't is don't rely on the listing price as market value. My next don't on the list, don't number two, is to leave your offer to the last minute. This is stressful for multiple reasons. One, if you've gone and seen the property, you like the property, make sure you're communicating with your agent well in advance because it's gonna come into some of our other dues as well. But if you leave it to the last minute, you're going to be scrambling to write the offer. You don't have enough information on the property and you could end up just in all honesty, wasting everybody's time. You're going to waste your time because you're going to be getting yourself excited and you're not going to be in a position where you could potentially win. You're going to waste your agent's time. You know, they're going to write the offer, try to get it into the agent, adding a lot of stress. You're going to waste the sellers and the listing agent time because they're going to look at your offer. Waste of everybody's time. Wasting everybody's time. And if it's not prepared well and it was too rushed, they're going to toss it to the side. So it's very important that you don't rush this. You take your time. Now, I know in some of these hotter markets, it, the timelines are very tight. So we're going to talk about some of the do's that you can do to be prepared for writing these offers. The third don't that I have on the list is expect a lot of seller concessions. This just recently happened to me where the offer came in with them wanting us to paint the property. They wanted us to have it professionally clean, repairs done. If you're going to come in with a lot of these things that you're asking from the seller and they have another offer that's similar to yours with none of those asks, they're likely to lean over to the one that's a little cleaner in their opinion. When you start asking for too much, it devalues your offer, even if maybe you are the higher offer price. So come in, depending on how many offers are going in, come in as clean as possible. Focus on giving the sellers kind of what they're wanting if you really want that house. Number four on the don't list is to go subject free. Unless you've actually had a conversation with your broker in advance, this is where buyers get burned. You go in subject free, you're not fully prepared, something happens on let's say your financing, you're now obligated to that property. Now in BC here, we do have obviously the rescission period now, so that does help you get out with a fee. But if you can avoid writing that fee and you can avoid putting yourself in a situation where you have to back out of the property, I would highly recommend you do that. Don't actually go in subject free unless you have confidence that you can pull the trigger and get things done on the completion. All right, and my last don't on this list, some people might get a little angry at it, but that's okay. Drop some comments below and let me know what your thoughts are on this one. In my opinion, don't work with an agent who doesn't understand the multiple bidding strategy. 
Don't work with someone who maybe hasn't gone through it and doesn't understand the nuances that you have to put in an offer to make sure that your offer is then as competitive. Because again, it goes back down to, are you wasting your own time writing on all these properties if your agent can't get it across the finish line? Now, saying that, even great agents sometimes will be working with you and you're just not in the strongest position. Some other buyer maybe has a better offer, the price is higher, they're going subject free. That does happen. But if you're working with an agent who is recommending you to chalk this offer full of everything you possibly can, and you know they're you're going up against four, five, six, seven offers, you're likely working with an agent who's never actually gone through a multiple bid, and that's not gonna help you get the home you want. So make sure you have a conversation with your agent, make sure they've been through the multiple offer strategies, or they've got someone that they can go to that can help them with this to make sure that you are putting yourself in the best position to get the home that you want. All right, that is the don'ts. That's my five don'ts to winning in multiple offers. Let's talk about what you should do in order to win a multiple bid. The first thing you should do, or at least your agent should be doing, is find out what's important to the sellers. If you're actually having the time to have the conversation, you might find out that price while it's important might not be the most important thing. Maybe it's the dates that they're looking for. They need a quick sale, they need a longer sale. Maybe they want to release their equity and they want to rent the property back while they take their time to find their home. Maybe it's very important for them that they take certain things from the house. Maybe the chandelier or something like that is a family heirloom. Find out everything that's important to the seller prior to writing your offer because sometimes while price is very important, making sure that you keep the seller happy with what they're looking for can go a long way as well. And sometimes can even outbeat a slightly higher offer. The second thing to do is to actually run those comparables. We talked about what not to do and remembering that the list price is only a marketing price. Make sure you run those comps with your agent in advance to make sure that you know exactly where the value of this home is give or take. Now, of course, there's going to be concessions. Depends how far back those sales are. A good agent is going to help guide you to where the price approximately should be. But at the end of the day, the price that you choose to put on that contract, you should be comfortable with. So if you don't get the property, you're okay because you feel someone maybe has overpaid for it. But if you do get it, you don't have the remorse that you've overpaid. Be absolutely comfortable with the price that you pay. And that starts by understanding the comparables in the area to see where you are paying in relation to other sellers. The third thing that you should do is put a bit of a higher deposit down. The reason why a higher deposit down, especially if you're going in with subjects is important, is you're trying to show the sellers that you have proof of funds. It's very important because they are taking a risk when they're looking at multiple buyers without any real history on those buyers. If they can see you're putting a larger deposit, you likely have the funds to cover anything that does come up in the property. If someone's putting a lower deposit down, well, that could mean that they're not as you know solvent. So if there's an appraisal issue or something that comes up on the property, like a special levy, that could impact their finances. So sellers really do want to see that higher deposit to show strength in the buyer's financing capacity. The fourth thing that you should do when you're heading into a multiple offer scenario is get prepared well in advance. So what do I mean by that? Well, step one, really make sure you're working with a solid mortgage broker. And in my opinion, work with a mortgage broker who has the capacity to find out if you can or can't go subject free. If they've never had an experience like this, same thing working with the agents, maybe it's time to find a better broker who's able to give you the confidence you need if you do need to go subject free. They're gonna look at your ability to qualify. They're gonna look at the property itself. They're gonna run the comps with the agent. They're gonna look to see if they can get an appraisal done in advance so that they can give you the comfort knowing that if you go subject free, you're gonna be okay. So make sure you get all of those ducks in a row. Now, let's say hypothetically, the building is saying offers are being taken at this time and we're only doing showings at, at a certain time. We'll have the conversation in advance with your agent to see maybe if you can bring an inspector through. This is gonna be a bit of a cost to you in advance, but if you can remove that one extra subject and you know exactly what you're buying from a peace of mind perspective, that is gonna go a long way towards your offer when you don't have that subject to inspection clause. Also, it lets you know what might be coming up in this building and you may actually say, 
it's not worth writing on because there's too much work for what you have to possibly bid on it. So get all of your stuff prepared as much in advance as you can. So the day you're writing your offer, you have all of the stuff that's the most important to the sellers. You know financing is gonna be not a problem. You've got that inspection done and you can go in with the cleanest offer possible. Sometimes those cleaner offers, again, could outweigh a price if prices are fairly close. And the last thing that you should do if you're going into a multiple offer scenario is interview and work with an agent who has been through the process and truly understands how and what it takes to win in a multiple offer so they can properly advise you so you can put your best foot forward. So here on the Kelly Fry team, we have done just that. We have focused on training and educating our agents in a way that they are gonna be able to maximize what you can do when making the offer. We have done that by utilizing this buying power checklist. This is something that all of our agents can go through with our buyers to find out where your strengths are in your offer so we can leverage that and make sure that your offer is put forward. We look at things such as, are you able to pay over the asking price? Are you paying cash versus getting financing? Maybe we've got the room to offer some seller credits such as paying for the seller's legal fees. Can we offer any sort of occupancy period such as a rent back or free rent period to the sellers depending how long? Like a subject to sale. Subject to sale would definitely make an offer weaker compared to other offers that don't have it because they have to then rely on you selling your home prior to them actually getting their property sold. So they probably lean to an offer that doesn't have that. These are all things that are covered in our buying power checklist. So when you work with one of our agents, you know that they're looking through every possible aspect to make your offer as strong as possible. Here's a bonus six thing to do if you're an agent. If you're an agent, it is very important to build rapport with the listing agent because that will lean heavier in the actual offers as well. Case in point, we just had a multiple offer on a property that I had listed and I had an agent who was in constant communication with me, treated me absolutely with a lot of respect, which meant that when we are coming down to it, I had more confidence in her getting the deal done than the other agent who was kind of just wishy-washy and was throwing things to the wind. That does play a lot, you know, in the conversation that a listing agent's gonna have with their seller. Do we think that the buyers are able to get this done based on the conversations we've had with their buying agent? So keep that in mind if you're an agent. You need to communicate with the listing agent as much as possible and build that rapport. That's our video talking about the do's and don'ts when heading into a multiple bid scenario. If you keep these things in mind, that will help you be able to get your offer accepted so you don't have to necessarily go through some of the pain that other buyers have gone through. You might've seen it in the news and stuff, buyers losing five, 10, 15 times. The goal here is to get you as prepared as possible so when you put an offer in, you have the highest chance possible to get that offer accepted. Thanks again for watching this video. If you did find this video useful, drop some comments below. What was some of the takeaways that you guys had that's gonna help you with your next offers? Also, don't forget, like that video, subscribe to this channel so we can continue to bring you the most cutting edge education that you need to know about buying, selling, and investing in the greater Vancouver area. And once again, if you guys would like to learn more, you can hit me up in the comments below. We can book a consultation so we can talk about your buying power and what you can do to make your offers written and accepted in a stronger position.